Welcome back to our little corner of Northeast Scotland. There are signs of spring everywhere, and you might even be able to hear the bird song in the background of me recording this. It's been almost a month since my last video, and I've recorded lots of bits and pieces, so in this video I'll take you along throughout March, introduce you to our new kitten, and show you what's been going on at home. Oh my gosh, okay, I'm nervous and excited. We are on our way to pick up our fur baby, our new kitten, Akira. So you'll meet him in this video. <laughs> We've kitten proofed the house as much as we can, which is basically impossible, but I just really hope the car ride home goes well and Floki gets used to him. It'll take a while, but it is what it is. <laughs> This is Akira. He is a Blue Point Siamese, and when we picked him up, he was 11 weeks old. Before we went to pick him up, we had prepared our bedroom as his safe space, since it's the only room we can properly close off and make comfortable for a kitten. And he immediately seemed at ease and was super curious and playful and seemed to have not a care in the world as most kittens do. Our older cat, Floki, could immediately smell something in his house, <laughs> something new and strange. But we waited until Akira fell asleep to let Floki near him, as we knew it would be the least threatening introduction. First, we allowed Floki to familiarize himself with Akira's scent using his blankets, which of course is going to startle him a little. This is the first moment Floki sees Akira. And we are so glad that we did this when he was asleep because Floki, you can just tell by his body language, he is a little bit freaked out. So watch his back fur and his tail, how much it puffs up. And you can see he kind of slinks a little bit lower, but he's also so curious and he doesn't do anything except sniff and just try to figure out who the heck is in his bed. While Akira is sleeping, we let Floki watch us pet him and use reassuring voices. Just keep the vibe happy and calm. And we also let Floki have free reign of the room so he can sniff whatever he wants. He can eat Akira's food if he wants. Just let him know he's still the boss. For the first several nights, we will keep the door closed so that Akira has a safe space and he can sleep and play whenever he wants. And we don't have to worry about them interacting without us being awake. This was their first encounter while Akira was awake. Floki is immediately curious and comes to inspect the tiny creature in daddy's arms. He gives a warning hiss but doesn't attack. We give Floki his favorite treats as a reward while allowing Akira to explore on his own as it's his first time downstairs and his world just got much bigger. He's very curious about Floki, but mostly I think he's just trying to familiarize himself with his new territory. And Floki keeps a cautious distance at first. Do you want to play? Maybe set him down. It's okay. <laughs> Good 
by the end of day two, Akira is clearly super confident and he's getting to know his new parents. He constantly purrs when he's being held and is very cuddly. And of course, we're giving Floki tons of love, showering him with affection and treats, making sure he knows he's still our beloved baby. Whenever we could tell they were both really sleepy, we would bring Akira over to Floki and they'd just kind of be near, near each other, but no pressure or intensity. <laughs> but for the most part, for the first several days, whenever they were near each other and they were awake, Floki would growl or do kind of like a low groan, which is totally normal. He didn't hiss that much unless Akira would like a pounce on him or something. Akira absolutely loves to run and jump and climb everything, and despite having a very tiny home, I decided to invest in this giant cat tree, which was a bit of an upgrade, you can see. Floki climbs trees outside all the time, so he immediately got used to it. I also know Floki likes to be up high and keep an eye on his kingdom, and I'm hoping that eventually they'll maybe sleep in the baskets, but if not, they are already loving the platforms, which is great. And the main reason I got the giant tree is because it's extremely stable. So when they're both full grown, running up and down playing on the tower, I don't have to worry about it falling over. <laughs> Doesn't go any higher, sorry. <laughs> oh gonna be a madhouse when they both start climbing on that. This was four days after they met and already they were showing signs of playing and just being really comfortable together. I mean they weren't best friends by any means but just seeing them near each other without growling or fighting or anything being comfortable a little playful was making us so happy and hopeful. We set up the sofa bed to have a big platform where they could just sleep and hang out throughout the night. And it was a good choice because I think being together while they were sleepy made things a lot easier. So this is basically my life. <laughs> Between very hyper zoomies He insists on sleeping on me. Sometimes he sleeps right next to me, but he loves it right here. It's cause very cozy and warm. And he's, he's like a little heater himself. So we're both very cozy. <laughs> oh, he loves being on the shoulder. Perfect, he's sitting there. Not so close. Yeah, climb down. Oh, jump. Exactly one week after they met, Akira climbed into the basket with Floki and fell asleep. And although Floki didn't stay for long, it was such a heart-melting moment. Each day his confidence grows and thankfully we both work from home so we can take shifts watching him. He's the typical kitten, curious, playful, extremely energetic, having huge bursts of playful energy between long naps. But of course his natural curiosity means he pushes his boundaries. <laughs> he climbs everything, chews everything, and tests everything as a scratching post. So he requires almost constant supervision so we can set boundaries. And of course we reinforce our bonds through lots of playtime. Now that his confidence is growing, he's also testing his boundaries with Floki. So after about a week and a half, they started wrestling a lot more. So uh, Akira will usually stalk and pounce on Floki. 
and it will lead to lots of playing and rolling around. And we just watch for signs of aggression. If things get a little bit heated, maybe Floki gets annoyed that his little brother won't leave him alone, we just separate them. Oh, we don't want things to get out of hand, but Akira is just still so tiny, and even if Floki didn't mean to, he could potentially hurt him, so we keep a close eye. But mostly they just have fun playing and rolling around and wrestling like normal cats. Occasionally, after about an hour of them playing, I notice Floki gets kind of annoyed and wants to be done. <laughs> so he'll kind of show signs of dominance and not quite aggression, but, you know, I don't want it to lead in that way. So I definitely separate them if they've been playing for too long. It's so funny. I have moments where I'm like, they're never going to be friends. Floki will never accept him. And then an hour later, they'll be cuddling or playing or bathing or whatever. It's just, it goes back and forth so quickly. But mostly we are just incredibly happy that Floki is sort of accepting his brother. <laughs> A lot of people have been asking whether we're going to let Akira outside. And yes, we definitely will eventually. We just want to make sure he gets big and strong and happy and confident and feels totally at home before we get close to that point. And it'll be at least six months before he goes out because at that point he gets his chip. We'll let him out slowly like we did with Floki, little by little, into the courtyard and then into the garden and kind of take it easy. This was about two weeks after they met, and they finally fell asleep next to each other. It was so sweet. Oh. In other news, I've been quite busy with work lately. I've been making tons of tutorials and classes and planning for future workshops, keeping up with my Patreon, selling work online, and just, yeah, everything that comes with running an art business. As we slowly shift into spring, I'm feeling a bit more of my physical and mental energy return and getting that itch to go on a really long coastal bike ride. I've been going to the gym at least once a week over the entire winter, which has really helped me keep my energy up. But I think now that this weather is getting nicer, I'm going to just switch that out for going on more bike rides. And hopefully soon I'll be able to do my ne next little stretch of the coastal journey which, by the way, is going from Aberdeen to St. Cyrus, so it's on the East Coast. As you've seen in some of my previous videos, I've been enjoying some fiber art and crafting, and lately especially, I've been really into embroidery. And of course I had to put my own spin on it, <laughs> making landscape embroideries, but it's just been so relaxing and rewarding. This is now completed. This is going to my friend in Sweden. They said they wanted something about this size on their wall, but they're probably expecting a painting. But I used it as motivation to complete my first little landscape. Technically, it's not my first, but it is my first in the last few years, and with the strategy I used in this one, which is a little different. And this is my next... Now let's go out to the good light again. You can kind of see this one. I'm using a single thread. I'm like splitting the threads and making them singles. So this is just kind of the very beginning and I'm also adding a bit of wool there will be mist covering some of the mountains and it's yeah it's gonna be fun but it's taking forever because it's single thread do you like it is that an approval welcome 
into a very spring-like day. It's about 15 C and everything is starting to bloom. All the trees are budding and it's just the perfect day to do some gardening. It's just some cleaning up and working out here. So uh, the courtyard is a bit of a mess. It needs a good thorough cleaning. I can hear all my neighbors doing yard work as well. <laughs> Um, and it's a bit overwhelming at the moment because there's a lot to do out here. But I just gotta chip away at it little by little. And I love being outside on a day like this, so I try to have some fun. We moved into this place in January 2020, I believe. So we have been here for just over four years. This outdoor area, the courtyard as we call it, has been a lot of things for us. It's been kind of a dining area slash work area. It's been a gardening, potting area. We actually need to access this door behind me to get to our laundry and our freezer, but I've always, seen so much potential out here and because of lack of time money motivation whatever I've just kind of stuck with the basics like a table some chairs a spot to make some to pop my plants and to come and go from this area I want to be out here much more often this summer so I want to transform it and to make it feel a little bit more inviting and make it more comfortable I want to get rid of all the um, debris that's everywhere because it's just gotten to be too much. I need to power clean these stones. Uh, I want to make a new table for the potting area and maybe get some new seating and some chairs and table. Like we'll see how it goes, but there's a lot of little things that have to be done. So I thought I would take you along the journey to rejuvenating this outdoor space. This Japanese quince bush blooms so beautifully from March until about May uh, and this bush over here in the corner which I need to trim is going to be full of yellow flowers and then this area behind me this is going to be a flower it's a gooseberry bush and lots of strawberries and lots and lots of wildflowers and then we have our little garden helper who digs up all my plants yeah you do. Are you gonna help mommy? Actually the last couple of years we've had frogs in the pond which is kind of cute. There's a lot to do so I'm gonna make a list and then just get to it. My goal is to complete this within two weeks. If I can get all of the big stuff done this week then I kind of have a clean slate to work with during April because we only have one week left until April and April is going to be so busy so I would like to be mostly done and then have the fun stuff to do in April. <laughs> Since we are renting here, we can't really do anything super permanent, but I think I can get a lot done and make it look really nice and be very cozy and welcoming, even with those constraints. So I'm not doing anything majorly structural, it's like not a big deal, it's mostly cosmetic. And I do most of my gardening in containers anyway. So yeah, let's just jump in and see what we get done today. Don't bite that. <laughs> God. All the clips of me filming out here in the courtyard were over the course of several days, and for the most part, it was absolutely freezing. We had one beautiful day, and then, you know, back to nearly winter temperatures. So it looks a little deceiving. I was pretty cold. <laughs> I guess this happened over the winter, but oh, that's crumbling so much. Okay, um,
I'm using the side garden as a kind of staging area or just a dumping point for everything I'm going to get rid of. So like all the cardboard, some metal stuff and wood and you know, all that. And then I can do this side garden another time. <laughs> as soon as I started making good progress out there, winter returned. It was actually pretty beautiful and relaxing and cozy and gave me a chance to rest after a couple days of hard work out there. And then luckily I found someone to take the old rotting pallets away, which cleared up a lot of space in the courtyard. So that as soon as it stopped snowing, I was able to continue out there. Okay, so I never knew how satisfying it was to power wash something. <laughs> I actually bought this power washer last summer to wash the bikes and the car and whatever, and it just sat in the garage unused. So when I finally had this chance to use it properly, oh my goodness, I mean, look at the difference between before and after on these stones. It's like night and day. I actually found out there's a video game where you can power wash things, which now makes total sense because of how satisfying this was. <laughs>
next section. Okay, I'm done for the day. <laughs> I finished the first layer and I've showered, got some coffee, gotta go do some work, but I'm happy with it. Instead of dark brown, it's just a light brown. <laughs> and a lot of the, the dirt and the gunk and a lot of the moss is gone. I don't think my pressure washer is powerful enough to get rid of everything, but we'll see how this dries and if I can like sweep away any of the rest of it. Let me know what you think about this. I may put this table in the side garden because it's like an older table and the ta and the chairs and everything, it's like a little bit run down. Um, and then over here, getting a newer table with two really comfy garden chairs and then a couple benches that we can like tuck away but then when people come over they can use them or they can use the chairs from the other table we have that'll be in the side garden. And then I'm going to get some locally made planters. There's this guy selling them on Facebook Marketplace and they're really, really nice. They're like raised planters. So I'm going to maybe put a few of them like along here. And this is the area that gets the most sun in the whole courtyard. <laughs> so I got to take advantage of that with all of my vegetables and, and everything that I'm planting. Somewhere in this courtyard, I'm going to do a little barbecue area. So I'll have a section with his smoker, which is over there right now, and maybe like a raised table where I can put a portable grill because I really miss grilling. I want to grill everything this summer. Um, and then a table with a newer umbrella or a freestanding umbrella because I've seen those as well. Um, I don't know. There's so many options. <laughs> I need to start looking at what I can find used and local because that's what I prefer. Or if it's like a table, um, building it myself, <laughs> but I don't have a lot of power tools or, or any. I have a drill and a hammer and a handsaw, so we'll see. But because it snowed a bunch this week and rained and just stuff got in the way of doing all this, it's already Friday night, Friday afternoon. So I'm almost at my goal of being done with the first big clear out. And now in the next week, which is April, <laughs> I can start some of the fun stuff, but I still have to do a lot of work. I have to clear out a fair bit of stuff and start transplanting all of my existing container pots into some nicer ones. But that's fun stuff. It's, it's work, but it's fun. I don't know if you can hear that. The bees are back. I am so happy to hear the bees. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm going to end this video because it's probably way too long already and I got to go do some work and there's only two days until April. Um, but yeah, thank you for hanging out with me and I hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you again soon. Hopefully we'll be outside a lot more now that the weather's getting nicer. Filming is way more fun outside and when we're doing something interesting. <laughs> so thank you all and I'll see you next time. Take care.